Well, now our next moderator has been has found his home here in the College of Aces for over 30 years, and he is internationally recognized for his scholarship, research, and teaching in biometry and cropping systems. It is my honor to welcome Herman Valero, the 15th Dean of the College of Aces, to lead us in a fireside chat with GDM. Dean Herman Valero and Gaston Suardiez are here seated on the stage. Gaston is the strategy lead at GDM. And we're really excited GDM is the newest ag tech company to join the research park. We will be celebrating GDM later this year. And with that, Dean Valero, thank you. Well, thank you so much and for the introduction and a very exciting event. Really, we've heard a lot of great things this morning and I'm thrilled today to uh, talk, uh, have this fireside with Gaston. Uh, it's interesting because we're both from Argentina and Desiree asked me to uh, do this fireside and I provided some topics. I said we can talk about continuing celebration winning the World Cup. That was the first one. Uh, and she said no. Uh, the second one was we'll do it in Spanish. And she said no. Uh, so we're going to try to do something of, of a company that um, I saw when I was in Argentina, the very beginning of this, and has been a, a great success. So I'm super thrilled to talk to Gaston about it and for him to have the opportunity to introduce GDM uh, to you and uh, tell a little bit about the experience of going through GDM. So I'm going to start, uh, Gaston, first of all, welcoming you here, uh, welcome you to the research park and GDM uh, to the research park. But uh, before we get into the uh, core of the soul and philosophy of, of GDM, as a small company growing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about a brief overview of GDM mission within the agricultural sector worldwide, and if you can add some of your flagship products and services in the U.S. and how they uh, address common challenges in agriculture in the U.S. and worldwide. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for having us here. It is a, a, a proud to GDM and, and myself, uh, you know, having two Argentinians here in the room. Uh, we had a dinner together last night and it was all about uh, soccer. So we will probably talk about that later. Um, I want to uh, congratulate the, the planning committee. This is uh, an impressive event and, and for us to be part of this and be part of the research park is very important as well. Um, you know, our mission as a company is, uh, so we are a breeding company. We, uh, we research and develop and market products, uh, essentially focus on, you know, for the last 40 years, we have been mainly focused on breeding for soybeans. And now we are expanding our uh, mission and vision into some other row crops. But essentially what we do is to uh, invest in R&D as much as we can to try to bring value to the farmers in every single region that we operate. So this is, that is what we do at GDM. Uh, the company was founded in Argentina 40 years ago, and since then we have been expanding our operations. We are now in 15 countries. We employ like uh, 1,800 employees uh, worldwide. And uh, essentially what we do is to try to innovate and uh, bring more value to farmers. And uh, in that regard, uh, we, this is my point of view, Hermana. Uh, um, we had a, a unique advantage of having, a, as our CEO and founder, a farmer. So we have had the blessed of having a customer sitting at the board, uh, making every single decision from a customer-centric point of view. That was a unique uh, advantage, uh, and that has brought us to, to this point and, and, and to, to expand the company into new crops and new regions. So that is part of what I wanted to talk about today. Excellent. So, tagging uh, with that last sentence, uh, I think that it's very important in, in GDM, the family history and the philosophy and the early steps of the company to understand the foundation values and the evolution over time because of their impact on the business innovation and the community engagement that you have had. Could you? walk us through those early steps uh, and the philosophy of the company as, um, as they evolve and the influence of the, 
of the family. You, you mentioned some, uh, Gerardo being a farmer on the board, mm -hmm. but uh, just tell us a little bit about those early stages and uh, the family philosophy that uh, drives the company. Good. Well, so you made a, a good point there. You know, uh, I've been in the industry now for uh, more than 20 years. Probably half of those 20 years I've worked for uh, multinational companies, American multinational companies. And then I transitioned into this family-owned uh, company with private uh, funds. And, uh, and this is more kind of a startup, you know. And it has been like this for the last 40 years. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we are not a professional company, that we don't uh, compete. Probably we don't have the same uh, resources. So we have to be flexible and agile on the way that we approach the markets. Uh, but that feeling of being a family-owned company that we have seen uh, the same here in the US with some independent seed companies is part of what uh, brought us uh, here, you know. Um, the fact that we, we have a, a private funds and that we can make decisions, uh, always focus on the farmers as the main uh, driver for uh, innovate in breeding, that is what we do, uh, has been always uh, uh, an important thing and that is what I think that is uh, quite unique. Um, in 2022, our founder and CEO uh, stepped out of the company because he realized that he needed something uh, new, you know, a new, a refresh, a new vision. So that was when his uh, son came into the company as a CEO. And I think that the underlying decision that he made at that point was to try to expand the company because uh, he thought that he needed a succession plan, of course, but also he understood that probably what uh, brought us here that was more related to agronomy practices and, and those kind of things was not something that will put the company in the next uh, level. So that's why he made that decision. He's only in the 60s, so he still has a lot to do, and he's looking for some uh, uh, activities, so if you have any open positions, <laughs> he will probably apply. Uh, but it's fun, you know, the fact that he, he had that vision and that he invited his son to take over his role and uh, keep on pushing the boundaries for the company to try to expand into, uh, probably out of the agronomy thing, you know, that is what we have done. So I think that part of the family uh, vision was uh, to have a succession plan, but also to always think on how we could uh, bring more value to the markets that we operate. One of the things, uh, I'm going to get out of the script here for a second, because one of the things in our conversations that caught my eye was the fact that you say, in our company, it's okay to fail. It's only once. Mm -hmm. you expand on that? Yes, and, and I think that that is kind of uh, natural at uh, GDM, you know, uh, Gerardo has, uh, he, he had that uh, vision always, he always complained about not making decisions, and believe me, I suffered uh, himself when, uh, when I was kind of uh, trying to analyze all the things and uh, trying to put a business case in place and analyze all, uh, you know, the topics that could be related to uh, the business case. In the end, uh, for us, and this is uh, our experience, you know, uh, we don't have all the answers, but what we have done right, I think that we always focus on doing more than planning. And we fail a lot, but we learn uh, fast. And we quickly adapt. That, that is what I can tell uh, that we have done uh, right. Uh, the fact that we, uh, we we always try different uh, approaches and we always have kind of a delegation of the authority, you know. It is not a matricial uh, company that you have to always follow the processes. It has some trade-off, believe me, because as you do, you make a lot of mistakes. But the key is to try to learn uh, fast and try to partner with the local uh, companies, uh, other could be competitors, but through partnerships and collaborations, we, we have a growth the company. And that is another thing that is very important for us. Excellent. So if we um, move to technology and innovation, TDM has a 
tremendous focus on innovation. It will help us understand uh, the overall approach to innovation that they have in the company before I ask you this. I'll follow up later with a question about uh, the steps that you guys took, early steps on innovation. But tell me a little bit about the overall uh, uh, philosophy to innovation that they have. First, uh, Herman, I think that the, the company is built uh, on, on, the, on the confident uh, thought that we have around our uh, talents, you know? So you f can feel that you can always make an impact whatever your uh, responsibilities are. And uh, that is something that I think that it was uh, also natural uh, with uh, Gerardo, and I think that his son is trying to do the same. He has the same vision. And uh, the feeling that you can make an impact, whatever you are uh, doing, it, it is very important. Uh, we don't follow that many processes. And uh, so I think that we always, you know, breathing in, uh, on genetics is uh, about timing. Timing is everything. Uh, you cannot uh, lose a minute on trying to run as many cycles as you can with the crops. So that is kind of the philosophy that we have uh, through GDM. And uh, since the 80s, you know, we have been trying new stuff, you know, uh, always with the same products. It, it was all about soybeans at the very beginning, but we tried to test the products that we have developed for Argentina in other countries because we understood that the political boundaries were not important for uh, crops. So we started taking out of Argentina the same products and we tested in Brazil and we found out that we were bringing value to the farmers because of uh, early maturities, they were able to plant soybeans early and harvest early and so uh, run corn as a second crop and they made more profits out of the same land. So it was always a kind of an iterative uh, process, you know. Yeah, I have to say that I was going to ask you uh, to walk us through that um, um, early s stages of the use of early maturity mm -hmm. groups of soybean in Argentina and in Brazil. I have to tell you as an agronomist, when I, when I was looking at that and reading at that, I thought these guys are out of their minds. Um, <laughs> that's the reason I got fired as an agronomist. But, that's, but, uh, um, but I think it's, uh, I'd like for you to walk us through those early maturity groups adoption in Argentina and in Brazil, and tell us a little bit about the Brazilian market that uh, GDM dominates, and whether um, those setbacks or challenges that you had, uh, how, how do you handle those, right, if you, if you had any? So, uh, as I mentioned, Gerardo, our founder and CEO, he, he was a farmer in, in the very early stages of our company. He started like a, a farmer with some friends. And the hypothesis there was to try to test, uh, soybeans were not as important as they are today in Argentina. At that moment, farmers were planting like uh, groups eight and nine, which is what Brazilian farmers plant in the northern region of Brazil. Uh, so they, they, they started to test some U.S. products that were not uh, adapted to, to the Argentinian market. And by doing that, they, they found out that they, those early maturity groups uh, yield more than what was planted before and that they could do uh, wheat as a second crop. Uh, so that is how the company evolved since the very beginning. Uh, and then with the adoption of uh, GMO traits in, in the 90s, that, that was in, in early 80s. In the 90s, uh, we were able to uh, include over our genetics GMO traits, Roundup Ready uh, once. So soybeans uh, grew from almost nothing to, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 million acres in Argentina. After like 10 years in the early 2000s, we, as I mentioned, we started to test those products into some other regions because we realized that the political boundaries were something that we, you know, we, we always have as a limit. But in reality, the environments were probably the same in southern Brazil than what we uh, saw in northern Argentina. And that is how we expand first the company uh, geographically. Uh, by testing our products into some new countries. Uh, and again, uh, and probably th there was some uh, lack here. It's not that we 
uh, have seen everything and, and we, but we were part of the evolution of uh, agriculture in South America. And in Brazil at that time, uh, farmers were looking to try to test different products, less uh, sensitive to daylight, and we have uh, had those products. Uh, so we allowed farmers to plant soybeans early, and as I mentioned, plant corn after soybeans, which is something very impressive. I don't know if you uh, have ever uh, seen uh, planters planting corn after uh, the, 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 yeah, uh, it's quite impressive. And we were part of that. So we were part of the evolution of the agriculture in Brazil. This is in one season. Yes, yes. And then, uh, because of that, we uh, supported and allowed the farmers to uh, grow soybeans in the northern regions, what they, what they call the Cerrados region. So, I mean, in the end, it's all about uh, innovation, you know, and, and, and do, uh, and fail. Uh, these are, uh, what I mentioned about Argentina and Brazil were two cases of, uh, uh, you know, success. But it has not been always like that. Uh, by doing, we made a lot of mistakes. And then we came back to the US after 40 years. Uh, remember that I mentioned that we started in the 80s bringing some genetics from the US to South America. And now we are uh, you know, uh, coming back to the US with our breeding uh, on soybeans and with a new vision. You know, We are trying to expand not only geographically, but also in, to some other crops, corn. Corn is the king here. Uh, we learned a lot of things in, in the US. You, you asked me about what we are trying to do here in the US. We are always focused on breeding and R&D. Uh, you know, uh, our revenues are now at close to $900 million. We reinvest 15% out of that in, in R&D activities. But also we understood uh, that the US, the North American market is very stable. And so we, uh, again, uh, try to quickly adapt to that and, and we decided to not go with the same go-to-market approach that we have had during the last 40 years. So we partner with local companies, independent seed companies, and, uh, and also we, we acquire some companies so as to adapt to what we think that the market is uh, needing here in the U.S. All right, can I ask one more question? So before we go to uh, Q&A, I'd, I'd like to ask you about uh, sustainability from two different angles. The first one, uh, the, because we heard this morning the 27 definitions of sustainability, but uh, what's the role of sustainability in the company in terms of your uh, technologies and products? Uh, well, you know what? With the transition from, from our leadership uh, uh, team, uh, a new mission and vision came into the company. And I think that uh, in general, what, what I uh, told you today is uh, all related to sustainability. You know, we, we have been trying to expand the company, not only because we want to grow and we want to make more profits, because we did it through collaborations, you know, and partnerships. And the reason why we did that is because uh, we don't have all the resources. We are, we are a family-owned company. And uh, that because we think that uh, that is how we can be more sustainable and, and, and make a positive impact in the, in the environments that we operate. So in the end, I think that uh, sustainability, that concept of uh, social, environmental, and, and economics is immersed in what we do. Uh, the ag industry is uh, always related to sustainability somehow and uh, since we are uh, we have been here for 40 years and we plan to be here for many more uh, years to come I think that we we have a, a special focus on trying to to be more sustainable bring more value to the farmers produce more with less resources so and breeding has a lot to do with that I think and that is our core so we're going to open it up to Q&A. I have a question. What kind of talent are you seeking to help you grow your business in North America? Uh, good point. Uh, well, you know, the, the core is related to what we do and what we have done. That is uh, breeding genetics and, and try to transfer that uh, value 
to the North American farmers. But uh, the underlying approach is that we are trying to partner with local companies. That is part of our DNA. And also we are trying to evolve our company and bring more value through some uh, new technologies, like for example, gene editing. So that's why we founded a, a company called Traitology in North Carolina uh, that will probably add uh, more value to the genetic background that we have and that we offer to the North American farmers. Any other questions? Before we get to our next question, just a reminder, you can go up to the mics or we have a QR code on your tables. Uh, if you'd like to submit, of course, do that quickly so we can make sure to get to it. As you speak with the dean, are there new priorities for educating agriculture students as plant breeding changes? Well, I mentioned this before, you know, part of our DNA, DNA is to try to partner with local uh, partners in the end. And, and for us, uh, universities and, and institutions uh, in general are, are very, very important to, to probably learn more about local uh, needs, but also to try to transfer and uh, partner with uh, universities and, and students. So we have done this before. We have done this with the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. We have done the same in Brazil. And actually, last year, we, we partnered with the, the College of uh, ACES on the Science and Spirits. Uh, we did the same with uh, Purdue. And also, we piloted a, a program with the University of uh, Minnesota uh, on trying to uh, found some students that were trying to present uh, their research. We, we are not only focused on trying to found their uh, research, but also to try to uh, help them to build their leadership by presenting those uh, projects in, in the different industry conferences. So yes, uh, part of our DNA is to try to work with uh, public institutions and uh, universities. Uh, we found out that through those collaborations, we learned uh, a lot and we were able to uh, improve our uh, product offering in the end because it, it has to do with that. Um, and probably to conclude, if you allow me, Herman, I, I would like to, to tell you that, uh, because I know that there are a lot of uh, students and entrepreneurs probably here, uh, this is my, my point of view uh, after 10 years at GDM and more than 20 in the, in the industry, you know, uh, just try, do it, uh, learn fast, quickly adapt. And uh, I think that part of what I told you about uh, our history as a company is that impossible is nothing. So for me, it's, that is the message that I wanted to share with you, that, that just do it. Uh. So uh, I'm, to wrap it up, I'm, I'm just, I, I was going to ask you why the research part, but that, that I think you, you answered that. And I want to say welcome to the research part to the University of Illinois and our community. We, I know you guys have hired a lot of our students. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, want, we look forward to continue collaborating with you now here at the research part. Thanks.